heard. The member for Canning will begin his question again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Treasurer. Will the Treasurer outline to the House how this government is growing the Australian economy and how that economic growth is helping Australian families, workers and businesses? Will the Treasurer share with the House what he sees are the biggest threats to the Australian economy? The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the, uh, the member for Canning for his question. And I'm glad to get a question on the economy, Mr. Speaker, because the Labor Party has delivered more invisible surpluses than the member for McMahon has had questions in this place, Mr. Speaker. More invisible surpluses than the uh, member for McMahon has asked questions in this place. Now, as the member for Canning knows, when you grow the economy, you create jobs and you can provide the essential services that the Australian people need and deserve, Mr Speaker. And we have been growing the economy at 3.4 per cent through the year. We have created more than a million new jobs. We have had our triple-A credit rating reaffirmed recently, and we have it from the three leading rating agencies. We have delivered a budget deficit for 17-18, which is at its lowest level in a decade, and we are on track to come back to balance in 1920, a year earlier than expected, Mr. Speaker. Now, these are the results of a government which believes in lower taxes, Mr. Speaker. A government that believes in lower regulation, Mr. Speaker. A government that believes in more free trade, Mr. Speaker. And a government that believes in rewarding people for hard work, Mr. Speaker. And as Sir Robert Menzies said more than 70 years ago, it's the Liberal Party that believes in the power of the individual and their enterprise. And it's the Liberal Party that rejects the socialist panacea put by those opposite, Mr Speaker. Now, the Labor Party is getting arrogant, Mr Speaker. As we get closer to an election, they think it's in the bag, Mr Speaker. They are taking the Australian people for granted, Mr Speaker. And we're starting to get a closer look at what they believe. Like the member for Lilly, the incoming president of the Labor Party, who said that Labor's goal was to tear down neoliberalism, Mr. Speaker, and he was praising Bernie Sanders, Mr. Speaker, as the Labor Party has rejected the legacy of Hawke and Keating and embraced the Corbyn-Sanders approach, Mr. Speaker. And the member for Fenner, he gave a speech praising Friedrich Engels of Marx and Engels' today, Mr. Speaker, and the member. For Sydney, Mr. Speaker, we all know what the member for Sydney said. Aspiration is a mystery, Mr. Speaker. That's what we've heard from the member for Sydney, and we know that the ACTU secretary, if Labor gets the government, will be counselling the cabinet on which laws do not apply to them, Mr. Speaker. That is what we're going to see from a Labor Party in government: higher taxes, higher spending, union domination and a view that government always knows best. In contrast, the Liberal Party and the National Party the believe in the individual and their expired. enterprise. The